Batman fan And I'm a Canadian man I do top 10 lists And I eat ketchup chips Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Lazy Dude 99 Okay, so a lot has happened today. And you know that you know that stacker game that they usually have in there? You know it goes like doo, 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 and you have to press the button and it stops and there's another one above it and you have to try to match it up all the way to the very top. Well, I've been doing that for a long time. Not doing it that today, but uh Every time I would usually get to the final one, but get off by just one. So today I tried it and I won. What did I win? An iPod Nano. That's right, on my second try. I only paid two dollars for this. Booyah. Okay. Anyway, I'm here to talk about Iron Man 2. That's right, I have seen Iron Man 2 and I'm here to give my review on Iron Man 2. So, let me just go to say that this is a little bit of a disappointment okay I shouldn't have said disappointment that isn't really what I meant cause well you'll see let me just say cause the first Iron Man was so, had so much charm hip and uh, chemistry between all the characters this one fails on a few of those things okay the first thing that I kinda have a little bit of a problem with is the villain now Mickey Rourke, don't get me wrong, he's fantastic. Mickey Rourke did a great job as this villain, he had a great action, he had a great voice for it. However, he isn't given enough to do. He doesn't have enough dialogue to say that much to be menacing. Like, you got half of his dialogue in the trailer. And he doesn't say things during the fights to make him feel interesting. Now... Uh, this isn't his fault at all. This is the writers. They didn't give him enough time, and they put spent too much time with Justin Hammer, um, played by Sam Rockwell, I believe. Yeah, and um, and I just they spent too much time with him, and I he, his character got annoying really fast. Now the whole the whole premise of this is a. Uh, Tony Stark has been controlling the Iron Man weapon. The U.S. government wants it because, you know, it is a weapon and they say, you know, you're holding these massive weapons. You shouldn't have them. He's like, well, it's not a weapon. It's a shield. It's, you know, what we use for defense. And so, um, Tony Stark has it all under control until this guy, known as Whiplash, comes and kind of takes Tony Stark down a notch. Tony Stark still wins the the battle on the racetrack, but everyone's now like, well, this guy's supposed to protect us. He can't even protect his own suit and his own stuff. Tony Stark is also experiencing some uh, trauma with uh, he has some uh, the the chest piece that's keeping him alive is also giving him blood poisoning, and so he's trying to figure out how to survive, thinking he's gonna die. While I'm trying to stop this villain, while I'm trying the politics, while Justin Hammer going down, blah, 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 blah. And let me just say throughout this, Johnny, eh, not Johnny, sorry, Robert Downey Jr. is still an amazing actor. He, he goes through a lot of things that he has to go through. He, like, he goes really drunk and really depressed. But the thing is, I don't think it was pulled off as well as it could have been. See, in the first Iron Man, Tony Stark was a jerk, but he was a jerk that you liked. 
And here he starts to be a jerk that you don't like. And uh, Pepper Potts and uh, Rhodey are starting to be jerks to Tony, so you don't even like them as much as you used to. Um, Pepper Potts is whining a whole lot more in this one, and this makes her a little bit less likable of a character. Scarlett Johansson doing Black Widow it did a great job. She did it like per like sure she didn't have the Russian accent and whatever, but she still did a really good job as uh, Black Widow. Now, now, uh, as I said, I wasn't thrilled with Justin Hammer, and uh, there was a, okay in the first movie there wasn't a big fight with Ironmonger because they didn't have you know the time. Right? They didn't have the time. In here, there isn't... Well, there, you fight the villain. He fights the villain the first, but the villain's not fully developed. He just... Whiplash just has his whip things. And later on, he gets a full armor suit. And I... Okay, I heard that he's supposed to be a combination between Whiplash and Crimson Dynamo. But they never call him Crimson Dynamo. And the heck, they never even call him Whiplash. Uh, not once. You know, like, not even a hint of the line. Like, not even, uh, you got whiplash, uh, or something like that. Uh, you know, like in, uh, in Iron Man, when, the uh, Obadiah Stane, you know, said, we're iron mongers, that's what we do. So that's where you kind of get the thing. Same with the Incredible Hulk. He's like, the result could be an abomination. Kind of hinting at the name, but not actually saying it. In the way, you know. That's fine. In here, they don't even call him whiplash. Not even once. Now, um... There are some immensely funny scenes. That robot isn't in here enough. The you know the the one that Tony Stark keeps on calling an idiot. There are some funny scenes like okay. Oh no, I won't. I won't say that. Um. Now, uh, the things that this movie does well, it does have great action when the action is there. The only problem I have with it when Tony Stark's fighting our main villain. They don't banter back and forth. Even even in like other superhero movies, you still banter when you when you're fighting a villain. Even if you don't say silly lines. Like in uh in Batman Begins when he's fighting Ra's al Ghul, there are parts where like Ra's al Ghul knocks Batman down and says, Don't be afraid, Bruce. Just you know, just lines to keep it going, keep up the tension. And here when um when Whiplash and Iron Man are fighting, they're not saying anything. At the very least, Whiplash isn't. They should have had him say more lines. And I get it that he doesn't speak English that well. At least that's what he's trying to pull off. But I don't think it is as good a way as it could have been. Uh, Whiplash's motives are kind of subtle. I don't even really know what he's going for. Now, I know I'm trashing this movie a whole lot. But uh, let me just say, if you are a comic book fan, you're going to see this no matter what I say. You should. I mean, it's, it's just to get your opinion on it. And make sure you stay for the credits, because there is another little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Fury. You know, I always thought the, uh, that um, Samuel L. Jackson is, was born to play Nick Fury. I don't know. I think he was a little too... I think he could have been a little more gruffer in the way he spoke. But, you know, I mean, he's still Nick Fury, man. I don't care what anyone else says. Um, Tony Stark could... I, I, Robert Downey Jr. is still a great actor and everything. But, um, I'm going to have to give Iron Man 2... 7 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, it is an enjoyable movie for the effects, but it's not as charming or as much chemistry you know, as the original Iron Man. That's another thing. Um, Pepper Potts and Iron Man get together at the end of this. However, they kind of have a little, she's really not liking him throughout the whole film, and then they just end up kissing at the end. I didn't like that. It would have been better for me if they didn't kiss or anything like that. If they just left it alone, like they did in the first movie. That would have been fine with me. In fact, it probably would have been better. Um, it's mo Let me just say, the movie starts off great, sags a lot during the middle, but it still comes up to a, a fairly good climax. So, yeah. That's my view on Iron Man 2.
So thanks for watching guys and uh, see you around. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel and wait for more coming soon. Have you ever tried to play Stacker? That is an extremely hard game. I mean, I've got an iPod, yeah, yeah. Gosh, it is a hard game. And I won. Ha ha. Ha ha ha.